It's the Coley Olsen Show. See, because we took Coley and Colson and combined it. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to a new episode of Coley Olsen Talk Top 10. This week, Coley and I are discussing Kevin Costner. Yes, we are. He's not good, but has made some fantastic movies. Yes. Directed, starred in, mm -hmm. all around. He's great. Well, yes. He, he is good. He's good, yeah. Uh, I have no problem with now, that. Now, our number one and two, we don't know each other's lists, but I'm guessing our number one and two are either going to be the exact same or opposite of each other. Mm -hmm. But one and two Definitely. will be the same two yeah. movies. There's zero doubt in no, our mind. No doubt. Also, I just got to mention a few weeks back or months back at this point, we did uh, our top ten characters. Mm -hmm. What are the fucking odds that we both ended up with the exact same number one? Did we really? I yeah, Mrs. Doubtfire was our <clears throat> number one. That's weird. And it was like... like That's random. Completely like... Pick any character, anything. We didn't specify yeah. specific things. Or... <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's, it's very random. It's not like that's a movie we yeah. watch all the time either. It's, exactly. I Just mean, super weird. Very weird. Uh, yeah, so back to this one. Top 10 Kevin Costner movies. So these are, you know, we picked our top 10 that we enjoy watching, I guess. Yeah. Um, I'll start. Sure, you go ahead. And if you have it higher, just say higher. We'll yeah. talk about it at yeah. that time. Okay. I wonder how many of these will be the same. I don't know. Probably a few. Probably. Our house is very noisy today, by the way. Yeah. Dogs, kids. <laughs> yeah. All around shit show. Uh, my number 10, 3,000 Miles to Graceland. Not on my list. Okay. So this one, he plays an Elvis impersonator. Elvis' yeah. kid. <laughs> uh, we don't really know. Kurt Russell. Uh, good movie. Mm -hmm. They're robbing a casino or something. I can't really remember. But uh, it's good. Yeah. It's a fun one. And Kevin Costner is Kevin Costner. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. So that's my number 10. All right, then. My number 10 is The Postman. Yuck. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I found this heart list really, really hard to make. Well, when I suggested it, you were like, I haven't seen 10 of his movies. And then I looked and you had seen like 29. Yeah. And I was like, But my you're memory dumb. is of like six of them. I know. Maybe. I know. The Postman, we have owned for, we owned it for years and just never watched it. And then one day I was watching something and I saw like the cringiest moment. Mm. <laughs> and it was something to do with like a woman being like, Oh, you're a, you're, you're a godsend or whatever. And he's like, no, ma'am, I'm a postman. <laughs> and I was like, holy shit. <laughs> I yeah. ran down, we watched it like that week at some point. Yeah. It's a, an apocalyptic movie mm -hmm. um, where he gets the U.S. mail back up and running. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta yeah. get the mail out. It's not good. But it's <laughs> it's one of those ones that it's like, like, is Waterworld really good? I mean, uh, no. you know. So anyway, good pick. It just didn't make my list. Yeah. Uh, okay. My number nine, Open Range. Higher on my list. Okay. Your number nine. Message in a Bottle. Oh, Message in a Bottle. <laughs> uh, did not make my list, but not necessarily a bad one. Mm -hmm. This is one of the few Nicholas Sparks movies I actually enjoy. Yeah. And as far as Nicholas Sparks movies go, this is probably one of my least favorite ones, I would say. Yeah. Maybe I would need to watch them all. And, well, you know. I will. Uh, actually, I would. I would watch them all again. Maybe we'll do that one day. I fucking Maybe. hate most of those movies. <laughs> yeah. And Maybe I used to. Nicholas Sparks. I like the early ones. I like Message in a Ball. I like uh, <laughs> Walk to Remember. There are a few yeah. there that I like, and then they just turn to dog shit. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Nicholas Sparks movies were like super popular when we were first dating. Mm -hmm. 
I feel like. Yeah. Yeah, there was a bunch in, like, the first few years there. Yeah. But they, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. No, I... I yeah. Uh, so you'd watch them with me once and then never again. <laughs> yeah, I'll watch... I'll, there's, like, literally, like, four of them I'll watch any time. Yeah. But they're, the, the later ones there are, like... Oh boy, mm-hmm. not uh, not happening. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. My number eight field of dreams. Not on my list. Okay, that's surprising, I guess. A little bit. This one is where he plays the corn uh, farmer guy, <laughs> and he's like yeah. getting. He keeps hearing, "If you build it, they will come, mm-hmm. or he will come, or somebody somebody's going to show up." Yeah. Uh, and so he fucking flattens his corn down and <laughs> puts a baseball diamond out there. That's awesome. Yeah. How cool would that be? Fucking baseball diamond in your cornfield. It would be cool. Yeah. I suppose. <laughs> Do you? It was like professional <laughs> field too. It wasn't yeah. like some fucking dirt thing. This yeah. was like legit awesome. Yeah. He basically went nuts. Like. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, a bunch of. Uh, Started Ghosts voices. show up to play some ball. <laughs> yeah. Um, good movie, though. It's a fun one. Yeah. So that is my number eight. Yeah. My number eight is Wyatt Earp. Didn't make my list, and it's only because it's for two reasons. One, I, I've i only seen it once or twice. Mm-hmm. And two, I always confuse this with Tombstone. I know okay. Tombstone has... Yeah. Jesus, Susie. <laughs> I know thirsty good. <laughs> Tombstone has Kurt Russell in it, I believe, and Val Kilmer and everybody, but Wyatt Earp. I just can't remember it. It's a good one, though. Yeah, I, honestly, I don't remember that. Either. Of course, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> and just assumed that I liked that yeah, one. Yeah, we, we do like it. It's just, yeah. you know. Uh, number seven, Waterworld. Not on my list. Wow, we, we don't have a lot of the same no, so far. I do not like Waterworld. Uh, Waterworld. It ex- explains it in the beginning. Like, what if the world heated up and all the ice caps melted and the water levels <laughs> rise? So that's our yeah. water world. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's a decent movie. Um, Jesus, dogs. <laughs> Susie, go lay down. Aww. It's, yeah, it's not bad. Oh, okay, I guess you're just going to walk right around. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, it's, yeah, it's not bad. It's not great. It's over the top for sure. Yeah. Like very, very over the top, but it's a good, like apocalyptic movie. Yeah. In a weird way. Sometimes apocalyptic movies frustrate me. (laughs) I know. And I think this one does and that's why I don't like it. The, The show at Universal, I don't know if they still do it or not, but it was cool back in the day. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's my number seven. Your number seven. The Bodyguard. Higher on my list. No surprise. Yeah. Number six for me, A Perfect World. Higher on my list. Okay. You, you go? Oh. <laughs> uh, my number six, Open Range. Open Range. That was my number nine. Okay. What are you doing? I don't You're know. So weird. talk about open range. I, I will, you psycho. You're fucking <laughs> staring at me like a ghoul. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, open range is a western yeah. about open ranges. <laughs> Honestly. We, neither of no, us. I remember this okay. one. Just not that much. <laughs> um, I like this. This has Robert Duvall in it. And I can't mm-hmm. remember... The other, but it's it's a good one. It's a long, slow western. Yeah. A lot of westerns. One, they should almost be slow. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have no problem with long movies. Yeah. You don't either. No. But uh, yeah, this is definitely like one westerns. to rewatch. So it's a lot of his movies are westerns. Yeah, he's done a few. Yeah, a lot of sports movies too. Yeah, um, sports ones didn't make my list. <laughs> yeah. So number. Five for me. So that number six was open range for you? Yeah. Okay. Number five, The Untouchables. Okay. Not on my list. You want to go, Capone? Remember I showed you that? How cringy that is? Yeah. You want to fight? Oh, boy. Yeah. You had the best actor in the world, Robert De Niro, facing <laughs> off against arguably 
one of the most famous not good actors, Kevin Costner. Yeah. It's really funny because he really is a very famous, very not very good actor. Yeah. Kevin Costner literally made some of my favorite movies from the 1980s yeah. to the 1990s. Yeah. We're not but being mean is, by saying he's a bad actor. He is well, just we not are, good. <laughs> like, we really do enjoy a lot of yeah. some of his movies. His movies are good. The his ones that we enjoy, are, we really enjoy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Untouchables, the story of uh, the people that brought down Al Capone. Very not true to the... the they changed a lot of stuff, but it's still a fun movie. You get uh, Sean Connery, uh, Kevin Costner, Robert De Niro... Andy Garcia, good cast, directed by, I believe, Brian De Palma. I can't remember if that's right or not, but I think so. Anyway, it's a good watch. Mob stuff always is always a good one for me. I yeah, love that sort you. of shit. So, <laughs> uh, Your number five. The Highwaymen. Okay, we just watched this, like, yeah. uh, not long ago. Yeah, I probably could have changed something for that, because mm-hmm. I did enjoy it. Yeah. Um, this one, if you don't know, is about the two guys that brought down Bonnie and Clyde. Mm-hmm. So it's Kevin Costner and Woody Harrelson are the two highwaymen, which is they're they're caught. They're I can't remember what caught. They weren't FBI. What the fuck were they? Texas oh, they're Texas Rangers, right? And they're kind of retired, I guess, and they kind of just get this. Well, I think they ended the Texas Ranger kind of. Yeah. Like bounty hunter, right? profession and then they brought them back yeah for this one specific case and they're back now yes full force yeah um yeah it's a good one though i liked it a lot of people i saw don't like this movie i don't really know why i didn't really read into it because i was like this is good Mm -hmm. it told the story if i don't know how accurate it was or not i didn't look into it at all but if it is even a little bit it's it's a cool story Mm -hmm. so check that one out if you haven't it's on netflix a netflix original so yeah. Uh, yeah, that one is good. Number four, JFK. Not on my list. Oh, damn you. <laughs> I just watched this one the other day for the, I don't know, 15th, 20th time. <laughs> I like it. This movie has literally might be one of the biggest, like, all star cast movies of all time. Yeah. Like, to name a few, you get Walter Matthau, you get Jack Lemon, you get. Uh, John Candy, Joe Pesci, Kevin Bacon, um, <laughs> Kevin Costner. You get, uh, I don't know, there, there's tons. Uh, yeah. Gary Oldman. Um, just, it's mm-hmm. literally like every other scene you're like, holy shit, Donald Sutherland is in there. Yeah. It's a, a lot it's of favorites a, for you. All-star cast. <laughs> and the story is kind of, it's very like uh, conspiracy heavy, mm-hmm. but... That that's the one I don't do conspiracies. I, I I can't listen to people who who go deep into conspiracy flat earth things fucking drive me <laughs> insane. But like there are a few that I like to listen to and this being one of them, it just seems like his head goes back and to the left. <laughs> yeah. When he gets shot and I don't know. I mean there are uh, my my theory with now hear this one out. What if at the exact time that the third shot rang out from the observatory thing above? So, so let's say there was one shooter and it was Oswald. So he shoots the three times. The third one is the one that took part of his head off. Now, if you watch the JFK clip, which they show in the movie. It looks like he's the the way the footage is. It's kind of to the front and right of him, mm-hmm. and he's kind of leaning to his left a little bit, holding his throat because he had been shot through the throat. And when the the final shot rings out, his head definitely looks like it goes back and to the left, <laughs> implying that the shot came to the front and to the right. But my theory: what if at the exact moment? The third shot came from behind and it hit the back of his head, blowing that piece of his skull off. The driver of the car accelerated at the exact moment mm-hmm. and it sent his body back and to the left. Because he was already leaning left. Yeah. So if you accelerate, you're going to go back and leaning in that yeah. way. 
If that's a possibility, I'm sure they've covered that option. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe I'm the one who is going to crack the case open. Yeah, that's likely. I know. <laughs> Good movie, though. <laughs> and it actually shows the death footage of... Uh, it's kind of really, yeah. really re- creepy to watch because it's like they show it like 50 times yeah. back and to the left yeah. it is a good movie i do the like left that one. uh yeah good i movie. probably could have put it on my list mm-hmm. <laughs> all right number four for you let him go oh we just watched this yeah yeah we had a kevin costner month <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah this was actually i wanted to watch this one specifically before we did this list because mm-hmm. i thought it would make my list spoiler alert it didn't yeah uh-huh. Um, it wasn't bad. It just didn't hit me like I thought it would. Yeah. Um, won't really talk much about this one because it is brand new. I think it came yeah. out this year or last year. But, uh, yeah, I wanted to watch this one and we just happened to watch The Highwaymen the day after. Yeah. So it was like, it fit. Even yeah. though both of those didn't make my list, The Highwaymen could have. Uh, yeah, good movie though. Yeah, I like it. It's yeah. simple. It's not anything yeah. super special. Yeah. It's worth a watch. For sure. Number three for me, it, The Bodyguard. It was okay. your yeah. number, whatever. Seven. Yeah. I love this movie. <laughs> yeah, if it do. wasn't for the, the top two, this would be my number one. Yeah. I love... Well, wait, wait a minute. Let me let me just clarify that statement. If it wasn't for number two or one, <laughs> this would be my number one. I should literally be fucked. <laughs> what is wrong with me? Yeah, that was pretty stupid, but... Um, Yeah, The Bodyguard is a fucking great movie. I love this movie. I love this movie (laughs) clearly a lot more than you. Yeah. But I'm always... Like, if you were like, let's watch The Bodyguard, I'd be like, yay! I'd run down and grab it. I really don't know why you love it so... Like, it's fine. I'll watch it once in a while, but... I think that his character... You watch it more than I do. His character is great. Uh, The story is very cool. Like, it's, mm-hmm. he's a bodyguard for a pop singer, Whitney Houston. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's great. I, I just, I love it. The soundtrack's fantastic. It's a good movie. Frank Farmer. That's his name in it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I just don't, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't yeah. get the... I'm a big fan. Crazy love for it. Uh, yeah, so that's my number three. Your number three? A Perfect World. Okay. Yeah, I'm not surprised this one is as high on your list because you like it. Mm -hmm. Uh, This is a really good movie. He, Clint Eastwood directed it. He plays a, I think he's an escaped convict. I can't remember now. Yeah, he's running from something. Yeah, he's out. He got out and he kidnaps a kid. And the kid's like a Jehovah's Witness. And and he's in his fucking undies. (laughs) Because it was like early morning when he he ended up. Anyway, they, they go across... Texas together, basically yep. robbing things, and the kid's fucking. The kid has a chance to run away, and he goes back to the car. <laughs> he's like completely out and free, and then he's like, "Come on!" And the kid fucking runs to the car. Yeah, they're like, "What?" He he the, went back. He's a kid that needed a father figure. Yeah, I think he had no father figure, and he's a Jehovah's Witness. Not yeah. that that's a bad thing, but Kevin Costner points out some things that he's not allowed to do, and he's just amazed by what and it's <laughs> yeah. like yeah that's what Jehovah's witnesses do they don't do mm-hmm. that sort of thing but uh it's a good movie yep um yeah it's a it's a good one for sure i, I like this one Jesus <laughs> uh now here we go with our two and one are they going to be the same or different i don't know okay i think, I think they're going to be the same so I think so, too. I think they'll be the same. (laughs) Number two, let's say them at the exact same time, okay? Okay. On the count of three, I'm going to go one, two, three, and then say it. Okay. One, two, three, Robin Robin Hood. Hood. (laughs) Good. Oh, we are dorks. (laughs) Boy, are we. Robin Hood, uh, yeah, Prince of Thieves, it's called. Fucking, this movie rules. (laughs) Yeah. It, uh, yeah, it's, it's... Great. Morgan yeah. Freeman, Kevin Costner, Christian Slater, uh, Alan Rickman yep. in one of the fucking best roles of his career. <laughs> it's just so good. Um, Is this movie, like, popular? I think so. I think it was very popular when it came out. And then, 
I just kind of faded away, I think. Yeah. I don't know. Because it feels like one that could go either way. Like, we really love it, but I yeah. wouldn't be surprised if nobody knows it right. kind of thing. Yeah, I think it's a known, liked movie, but yeah. not love. And we have uh, the Blu-ray. There's an extended version. I think it takes it to about... I think the regular is like 220, and the extended takes it out to about 240, 245. Mm-hmm. Uh, I always recommend the extended director's things they're usually always better um yeah this one it's got some super it's the the soundtrack for this movie's great Mm -hmm. uh the score they use the brian adams song it's (laughs) fucking this movie's great yeah it is good um yeah if you haven't seen it you need to this is almost i i would say it's a yearly watch for us definitely but i don't think we've watched it i don't think i could check but it's been a while yeah we're due we will probably rectify that soon now oh, that we're um, talking about it. Guaranteed. <laughs> uh, so, obviously, our number one is Dances with Wolves. Yeah, obviously. Um, again, this is one where I recommend the director's cut. If you can handle it. If you can't, don't watch movies because you're weak. <laughs> uh, the director's cut takes the three-hour run time to three hours and 59 minutes. And it's worth it. Definitely worth it. It's... Kevin Costner, it's his, he directed it, he stars in it. I don't know if he wrote, I believe he wrote wrote it as well, or wrote some of it. But he won his Oscar for directing, it won Best Picture over, in my opinion, the best movie of all time, Goodfellas. Mm-hmm. But this one, I get why they picked it, they, you know, but I'm like, uh, Goodfellas is so good too. <laughs> yeah. Um. And he beat Scorsese, too, for directing. It's funny. Scorsese, <laughs> one of the best directors of all yeah. time. And, and Kevin, Kevin Costner beat him. <laughs> but, yeah, the movie itself is great. It's, it's like, unbelievably shot. Mm-hmm. It looks perfect. It's, it's yeah. awesome. It's funny that we both fully agree on it. Mm-hmm. Like, for such a long... And it's not like... It's a super, um, like it's kind of a slow story, mm-hmm. but yeah, it is. It's very have been absolutely no problem sitting through it. Yeah, yeah, all no. the time. <laughs> and we recently found the director's cut, the four hour version. Like we had always watched yeah, the three hour it was like a few years ago. Yeah, and then we were like, "Hey, director's cut," and we looked at the runtime, and it was an hour long, like <laughs> three, literally three hours and fifty eight minutes or something, or three fifty nine. Yeah. We are like, fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's watch that. And that's all I'll watch now. Yeah. That's the thing with me. Once I watch it, I'll watch both. You have to watch both. If if it's a difference. If the fucking movie, you watch it, or you, you check the time on the theatrical version, and it's an hour and 41, and then you check the director's, and it's an hour and 44, mm-hmm. who gives a shit? But when you watch it, and it's three three hours, and then four hours, that's, that's a big difference. Yeah, that's huge. So you got to watch that, so... Um, yeah, good, uh, good for Kevin Costner. He made <laughs> 10 movies that we like. Actually, yeah. more than that, because you have different ones than me. Yep. Yeah, good. Uh, we will be back again. I don't know with what. This side or the other. Oh. All right. <laughs> Thanks for listening, and we'll talk again in a few more weeks. Bye. Thanks for listening. Please subscribe, like, and share all the shows available on Watchers. Doesn't this piano music remind you of Rocky Balboa training in Rocky 3? Ugh, I stink. To keep up with Coley and myself, follow us on Instagram at Oliver Coley and at whore underscore sleeve. And please follow watchers underscore podcast for information on all our shows. Thanks again.